It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Here's Jeff Parles. Welcome in at Sports by the Book here at the South Point Studio. A little mini episode here today on a Thursday. Again, a loaded schedule. Thursday's moving forward here at the studio. Ralph Sirocco gets your day kicked off. He already saw it. If you missed it, it's already available on our YouTube page. Then we, myself, Alex White, who's here. Good morning. Good morning. We get you for a half hour. And then Brennan Gone, Jeff Motley, will take you through Gone Racing uh, at an hour from now at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And then uh, it's a little bit different now. Frank Nicotero is the closer. <laughs> Changing roles. Going from, eh, he had John Smoltz a few weeks ago. Doing what Smoltzy did, going from being a starter to being the closer here uh, for the day, uh, at least through baseball season. Uh, Frank uh, Brian McCormick and uh, I guess uh, I guess I'll stick around. Is that okay, McCormick? Is that all right? Yeah, he give me the not okay. I think so, you have to. I think they named the episode um, after you. So. That's a bad bad <laughs> job by Jerry. Jerry, I love you, but oh boy, we want people to watch, uh, not not back away as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, all right, so the Masters are underway. Finally. Uh, they're underway. Alex, how many bets did you end up with? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I stayed disciplined. I only ended up with three. Stayed, stayed the course. Couldn't find a matchup I liked with Siwoo, so stayed out of it. Uh, and then the weather today kind of kept me off Tiger to make the cut when okay. it was all said and done. Cause, so this, it got delayed. They just started a little, over, a little under an hour ago uh, there at Augusta. So Tiger, who already had an afternoon tee time, is probably not going to complete his 18 today. Right. Which makes it that he's probably going to have to play maybe up to 24 tomorrow if things go haywire with the weather. It's hard to see Tiger being able to do that. So that's why I backed out. I was going to play it. Plus 130s were pretty aplenty by the end of the day yesterday. But I, I stayed out of it when it was all said and done. On the flip side, I did hear a lot of people saying with the wind, that is definitely going to help the more advanced golfers who have been there before. So that might help him and help some of those rookies fall back a little bit. But of course, the big question, we all know this is, can he make it through the two days and not withdraw? So that's still in in play as always. But I really do think um, that will be his main goal, this tournament, make it through those first two days, see if he makes the cut himself. So you already know I am on Tiger to make the cut with just a little bit through and a little bit on that one. So Scheffler uh, has not gone off yet. Closes around four to one. Crazy when it's all said and done. The early, early leaders, very early leaders. Eric Van Ruin, the uh, South African, two under. Danny Willett, former champion. Danny Willett, two under. And how about this? Yesterday, Bryson DeChambeau, only mentioned by our guy Danny Burke and only by Danny Burke. <laughs> two under through two for DeChambeau. So, those are your three at two under. There's a few at one under. There's a lot at even par. Uh, Gary Woodland and Austin Eckroat and Charles Schwartzel are at the bottom of the leaderboard, but a lot of golf to be played at Augusta. We will keep you updated through the weekend, more so tomorrow and Saturday, unless if something really shocking happens in the next half hour. We'll have all those updates tomorrow when we have a better sense of things going forward, Alex. Definitely. I'm really looking forward to this one. And as I mentioned, I do have a few bets. But this year, more than other years, I really got involved with top 10 and top 20. So that's what I'm really excited about and um, looking forward to in this tournament. You want to go to some baseball real quick? Let's go to some baseball. Already have two games axed today. Milwaukee, Cincinnati. See ya. Play at a different time. Minnesota and Detroit, which is a shame because that was going to be the premier game of the, of the of the morning here on the West Coast where you're going to have an elite pitching matchup of Pablo Lopez and Tariq Skubal. Nope, yep. that game got axed because of weather in Detroit as well. Uh, the Mets and the Braves are currently delayed right now. Uh, they uh, look like they're going to get ready to go at the top of the, uh, top of the hour, but the tarp just went back on in Atlanta. Uh, it is Austin Winnens and Jose Quintana. Yesterday, this matchup was postponed due to weather. They'll play that game in September. Now, this one looks to be at least in somewhat danger, at least for starting anytime soon. Uh, Braves a dollar sixty favorites plus one fifty nine and a half the total. Alex, I'll just ask you this: these games they get post they, they get delayed. They're on the board a little longer. Are you more inclined to possibly go in? Are you more inclined to stay out? Now, remember, of course, we're in this post COVID era. 
of betting baseball where in pre-COVID, you have the pitchers listed. So a lot of the times it would be refunds. Now, in most shops, including behind us, those starting pitchers aren't listed anymore. That's a very good point and something to definitely look out for. So I I had this on my list early, but I did look at the weather. I saw the wind blowing in because I was going to play this over that total, especially with Atlanta 7-2 and two to the over on the year. We know how good that lineup is. And the Mets not bad either. Um, so I wanted to originally play this total. Now I'm definitely going to stay off of this one. Yeah, this is a uh, this is an easy stay out. The only thing I'd consider. Now, again, it's tricky. You have to see when this game's going to start and so on and so forth. I would consider taking a flyer in Quintana in the first five if you wanted to. But now with the delay, this is a get get away. Just stay away. We'll We'll find something else on the card. Uh, today, but that is a good point. I mean, through ten innings pitched, thirteen strikeouts already, just two walks. So he has done uh, well to start the season. Other afternoon action: Kansas City. How about the Royals? What a start for KC! Six straight wins. They're eight and four, going for a sweep of the Houston Astros, who are in mess to begin this season. Four and nine to begin the year for. The 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 uh, multi-time world champions, the defending AL West champs, Hunter Brown, Brady Singer, your matchup here in this one. Brown is a small favorite in KC today on the road to minus one eighteen total nine. Uh, this is up. Uh, that actually looks like it just moved again back to eight and a half on this. So you're at eight and a half across the board now. Um, minus one oh five. On the under, so this is juice to the over. Uh, look, I, I would only look to play Kansas City. I know you, you, you can get you, if you get in on streaks late, you you can you're playing with fire. But Kansas City just playing such good baseball right now, and this is an even pitching matchup. So home team plus price, I would lean to Kansas City. I'm with you, Jeff, and I already took the plus one and a half minus one forty here. Okay, I'm probably good, gonna sp- good price. Probably going to sprinkle a little bit on the money line, but you mentioned it. Singer, very good so far. Just one earned run and five hits in 13 innings pitched so far. Plus, it's a very tough spot for the Astros, who have been struggling, because up next they do have the Texas Rangers, who we know these two are rivals. So, yeah, I like, I'm like. i with you. I like the home team here in the Royals in this matchup. Houston, or excuse me, uh, Houston, of course, uh, Winning the division last year, uh, Texas, didn't matter that they didn't win the division. They won the World Series. Uh, they'll send John Gray to the mound against Jack Sears of the Oakland A's uh, there in Arlington. Minus 175 on Texas. Uh, total at nine and a half. Uh, juice under slightly on this one. Uh, I will say I, the A's are bad. We know this, but <laughs> they are eight, four and eight. They Same are. amount of they're technically ahead of the Astros right now. Uh, Texas, uh, look, a lot of firepower uh, early on in this season for the the Rangers currently in first place by a game. I, I'll just ask you this, Alex. When you end up with these favorites, you still you still end up, you still have a plus price on the money line if you want to take it on the run line, I should say, on the run line on Texas. The plus 105 minus a run and a half. Is that the way you'd look here? Way that Texas hits left-handed pitching in this one? I think so. I think that this is probably a good chance to jump in on the Rangers. And as you mentioned, Oakland, I mean, they've won three of their last four, so they have surprised some people here. But I think it's a good time to jump in on the Rangers. And you want to get that plus money, so I think the run line would be the way to go. Then the few evening games today, but the Keystone battle in Philly. Phillies taking on the red hot pirates to begin the season. Ranger Suarez will go for the Phillies today. Jones will go for Pittsburgh. Minus 138 on the fight in Phil's total nine in this one, Alex White. People starting recently to just hit this thing over now. So we may see some nine and a halves by the time we're done here. That's funny. That is my lean here to the over here because like you mentioned, I mean, the Pirates have been very hot, averaging 5.7 runs per game. And the Phillies have struggled, but I think they are going to start stringing things together. We know they do have a very strong lineup and their bullpen has been their issue. So that might help this jump over that total as well. I would look at the full game over that nine. And then for Boston and Baltimore, 
Orioles, of course, uh, Jackson Holiday makes his debut last night for the O's. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it did not. It did matter in the end. Seven five with that big comeback. Holiday went over, but the Orioles uh, again coming from behind to win that game uh, and really just steal a game from Boston. Uh, minus one thirteen on the O's, plus one hundred three on the take back. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez, Garrett Whitlock, your pitching matchup total eight and a half at the Fens here tonight, Alex. Talk about another surprise is uh, this Red Sox team. Everybody expected them to be dead last in this division, seven and five. But one thing that really stood out to me, they haven't won at home just yet. So I have nothing in this one. Good pitching matchup between these two. I mean, I have the Orioles about minus 130. So maybe there's a little bit of value there. It's a short price for Baltimore, but... Nothing uh, really jumped out for me. You want to move some hockey here? Let's move to some, to some hockey. Frozen Four, by the way, in action tonight. Just throwing this out there. Boston U uh, tonight is a minus 175 favorite against the Denver Pioneers. And then Boston College, a minus 165 favorite tonight against Michigan in the other Semi-final. I would actually lean to the dog pioneers in the first one. Okay. Uh, but I do like, uh, I do think Boston College wins. I don't know if I want to lay that price with Michigan, and then that would set up an Eagle Pioneer uh, final. We could end up also, of course, a BU and BC hold uh, hold their ground as favorite tonight, so we end up with a bean pot uh, scenario there in the final in the Frozen Four. All right. Let's go to the professional side of things. Uh, real quick. On the on the NHL, you have uh, you had three games last night. The Blues actually are within. Again, it will be it would be very difficult to pull it off, but they are within striking distance of Vegas right now for that eight seed. Uh, Blues just destroy Chicago last night. Came out hot too. Four yeah, it was four four the- four in the first ten minutes. And pretty easy uh, rocking chair after that for St. Louis. Uh, they're three points behind VGK. The The issue for the Blues, they've played an extra game. So four games left for VGK, three left for St. Louis. Uh, the Blues' remaining games are Carolina, Seattle, and Dallas. Uh, Dallas may not need that final game, so it could be a, a nice little break for St. Louis, potentially. Carolina still needs every game possible because they're still – alive to catch the Rangers in the Metro still. Uh, VGK has four left. They uh, play the Wild tomorrow, a game they'll be favored in at home. They'll play Colorado on Sunday, which obviously is a gigantic matchup. And then they get the Blackhawks and the Ducks, who are terrible. So very much uphill climb climb for the Blues. But VGK, alarming again, just got toasted in Edmonton 5-1. With no McDavid. That's the scariest part. And I think you've said all year it's a – it's always been a good matchup for Vegas against this really strong Edmonton team. And then last night that um, proved a little differently. So a little bit um, scary for them moving forward going in if they do make it into the playoffs and that's their first matchup. Let's look to today. This wackadoo playoff race in the East, as we've talked about the last few weeks. Entering today, here you go. The New York Islanders currently in third in the Metro, they will take on Montreal. They're big favorites. Uh, minus uh, minus 220 now on the Isles with a total of six. Uh, you know, I, I'll just say this, Alex. I'll ask you, with, with, with bigger favorites here at the end of the season that need games, do you look at laying puck lines against the team in Montreal who is uh, done and has been done for a while? Do you look at puck lines? Do you look at potentially team total unders as well? For these teams that shouldn't have much to play for or because it's hockey, you just like, all right, well, this is going to handicap this like it was a game in February. Yeah, for the most part, just handicap it like it's a game in February because even the teams that have been out of it for a while are definitely still playing to their top level. And um, I mean, really, they're all still playing for jobs, right? I usually tie up the big favorites together, but you made a great point. There is a few puck lines that you could definitely look at, and I I think the Rangers is one of them going against the struggling Flyers. But I do like the Islanders here. They've won five in a row, and 
like you said, every one of their games is very important. This is the easiest of their last four games. So I think New York is the right side here, however you want to play it. The other New York team, the Rangers, currently number one in the Metro, number one in the East overall. They're taking on the Flyers, who are just in the middle of this epic melt here over the last month. Flyers, two points out of a playoff spot entering today. Washington amazingly holds that final one. Uh, Flyers also, again, the problem that they have is they have played one la- one more game than a lot of these teams that are in the mix. So it's a big uphill battle for Philadelphia to stay in this thing. Rangers are $2 favorites at MSG tonight, Alex. Do you know what the percentage is for each of those teams to make the playoffs here now? Because I do think, um, I think Pittsburgh is is looking like the best form right now between the last ones that are trying to get that last spot. But Philadelphia lost eight in a row coming into this game, and the Rangers are still still red hot. One, um, they And New York won the first three games against Philadelphia. Normally I'd put in revenge here, but you always say sometimes it's just a really bad matchup, and I think this is a bad matchup for the Flyers. Well, you made me, uh, you made me pull up my friends at Money Puck, who I have not gone to in a while, Alex. Uh, uh, right now, to make the postseason, the Philadelphia Flyers sit at a nice hearty 6.4%. So, I don't want to say donezo, but pretty much donezo. By the way, the Blues are at 03 So Okay. So, Money Puck does not buy that one bit that that could even happen, which I think is right. I forgot it about would, Money Puck as well. Yeah, it would some take, it would take, uh, graphs. Yeah. take a lot. And then the other three teams. So, the Islanders, actually. So, the Islanders currently sitting in the three-hole and two points clear of of the final wild card uh, are at 86, 83.6%. Wow. So they're in really good shape right now, according to the money puck. Uh, and then the caps and the penguins are essentially a flip 42, 43.3 for the caps, 42.4 for the penguins. Detroit sits there at 24.3%. So a, a quarter there for the wings still with a chance to get in. And then we have the wings and the penguins playing yes. today, which will be, that might flip if so, Detroit can pull it off. So that's part of the reason why the penguins are well ahead of the yes. wings. That is the biggest game of the day. Uh, wings are, excuse me, the penguins are the ones getting bet here uh, from a dollar 45 to a dollar 50. Now on Pittsburgh total six, on this one, you you look at this, Alex. The Penguins sold at the deadline, but here they are again. When you have Sidney Crosby and you're getting good goaltending, which is what's happened with Pittsburgh over the last month now, you have a shot. And right now, a point behind Washington. We'll get to Washington in a little bit. They have a they have a road game, but they are favored. But the Penguins again favored here today to knock off the wings and get themselves in good shape again. And I think that number is correct. I've been higher on the Red Wings than most people this entire season, but now at this point, they're definitely going in opposite directions. Uh, They've lost uh, six of their last eight games, and then the Penguins, they've lost, I mean, they've won four of their last five, and they are on a nice six out of eight streak here. So Pittsburgh looks good, and I think they are going to... um, continue playing at that level. I did like over six because I did make this one six and a half, but I'm going to stay away from that because we're kind of getting into more playoff style hockey. So might might see the best uh, defense show up here. Washington and Buffalo. Though the Sabres continued their NHL yes. long streak, longest streak of not being in the postseason. Uh, so they're not getting there. The Caps. A dollar thirty-five favorites on the road, plus one fifteen on the Sabers. Uh, you look at the way that <laughs> I, I just look at the metrics for the Capitals. They're terrible. Yes. The metrics are awful for this Washington Capital team, and then here they are as a favorite on the road today, and with a one-point lead to make the postseason. The smallest of favorites, according to Money Puck, to get that eight seed. They get the Lightning, the Bruins, and the Flyers to end the season. So that is not the greatest of stretches. The one thing that they do have going for them is is the Flyers could be totally done by the final game, and the Lightning and Bruins may be locked into their slots. So now it makes a lot more sense, right? Where two months ago I told you there's one team I cannot figure out, and it was the Washington Capitals because looking at their metrics – now it makes sense on why I had their rating where it was, but yet they would find ways to win games. And we've seen that all year long with this Capitals team. It's just a lot of vet- veterans and, you know, Ovechkin continues to um, 
do what he's always done. So this is a really tough matchup, especially because I like the Sabres. I think they are a tough, scrappy team, and they could find a way to pull this off. So this is definitely a stay away for me. But, I mean, we know the Capitals need it, and you're getting plus money there. Uh, not a... Uh, again, the caps. Uh, we have the we have the uh, favorites uh, flipped on our on our screen. Caps are the ones favored in this game, uh, or excuse me, sorry, I I'm wrong there. Caps are a dog. How are the caps a dog in this? Game? <laughs> sorry, Sean. How is that possible? Well, not not yesterday, or I mean, not today. They haven't lost yet. I should say. That's surprising. Buffalo's power rating really isn't that low. That's what's even more surprising so about Buff- this. So then Buffalo, uh, a uh, again. That streak <laughs> has to be infuriating to those folks in Western New York. Absolutely. And so right now, my home ice is about minus 133. So that line is basically telling you that this would be a pick em on a neutral. So they're about the same power rated, even though the Caps are still playing for that playoff spot. Probably Sabres by three then, uh, <laughs> the way that price, at least to me, looks. Uh, all right. Uh, go, one more I want to touch on here. Uh, Winnipeg and Dallas. Yep. Uh, of course, a, a, a really, really high-end game here. Uh, Winnipeg is going to be in the 2-3. It's just a matter of will they have home ice or not in round one. Uh, Dallas with a uh, chance to completely close the door on the division and actually with a win would close the door completely on the one seed as well in the Western Conference. They would be theirs with a win tonight uh, for good. They are uh, not a huge favorite, a minus-145 favorite. Tonight, plus 125 on a take back on Winnipeg. Six to total. Dallas, again, could lock things up with two to play here tonight, Alex. So this is one of uh, the few bets that I have already made. And I went under six in this one because it's really tough to go under with the Stars because they can make a lot of goals. Um, They're a very good offensive team here. But now we have a great goalie on the other side in Hellybuck. So I think this is going to stay under. Jets are 38 and 31 to the under on the year. Hellebuck 28 and 22 with a 92% save percentage there. So now we're seeing Dallas kind of tighten up here, playing more playoff style hockey, seven and three to the under in their last 10 games. Although they did trend over most of the season. So I like this under six. I made it five and a half. So that's one of my Best bets of the day. And then a couple favorites. We talked about both New York teams. I like them. And I do like the Kings tonight as well. Hosting the Flames. Coming off a bad loss there. But they do much better at home. And they're still um, playing to lock up their spot as well. So I like the Kings. And Calgary has just really fallen off as of late. Yeah, Calgary is, again, one of the bigger disappointments in the NHL this year. All that talent and just mediocre the whole year, not even close to a playoff spot, uh, not even at a point per game right. this year. Just the total disappointment uh, there with the Flames. Some people uh, like them as a deep playoff run going yeah. into the year. And uh, Kings, as you mentioned, Kings with a one point lead on Vegas right now. And again, it kind of depends how you think because the winner, the three seed will play Edmonton more likely than not. Even though Edmonton has two extra games, Edmonton somehow has five games left. So uh, Edmonton still with a backdoor shot to catch Vancouver if some things get weird the last week of the season. Uh, but then the more likely than not, the the eight is going to go to Dallas. I, if I'm VGK, I think that's just a horrendous matchup for them if they have to play Dallas in a best of seven. Yes. Uh, I, I don't see how Vegas would get out of that series. Uh, the Kings, just the way that the Kings play, I think they would probably give Dallas a little bit of fits. Yes. But still would probably lose that series to the Stars. Uh, but the Kings, as we've seen, again, those type of teams can give Edmonton problems. Those teams that just want to grind you out. So if you end up with an Edmonton Kings series, you can end up with a really nice, juicy price on L.A. in a 2-3 in the Pacific pot. Uh, to the NBA real quick, there's five games tonight. Uh, he, he, normally you would say that the Knicks and the Celtics would be the biggest game on the docket, but Celtics look like they're at least at a bare minimum, not going to play Jason Tatum tonight. Uh, they are obviously well in hand, clinched the one seat a long time ago. The Knicks have a lot to play for tonight in Boston. The Knicks with a win tonight would put themselves a full game clear of Cleveland. 
for the three seed. The Knicks clinched the playoff berth last night officially, even though they didn't play. Uh, if the Knicks can get to that three seed, that obviously makes that run to a potential Eastern Conference final a little bit easier. Uh, a Nick Pacer round one would be very interesting, but I think at this rate, the way that the uh, the Magic are led ballooning at the moment, I would not be shocked if Orlando ends up in that six seed, which would be a gift for the Knicks if that would happen. You know, the flip side of that is that Embiid is back and the Sixers are playing great. That yes. might not be the best, but Milwaukee, who knows what Giannis' status in the postseason will end up being. He's not going to play the rest of this regular season. Uh, this is a big game for the Knicks as a two-and-a-half-point favorite on the road tonight at Boston. Yeah, and I like it. I, I do like this New York team, and they are 10-4 and four against the spread in division games. So I think you mentioned it. I mean, it's a very important game for them here in Boston. No Jason Tatum. I would only look at the Knicks in this one. And I'm glad you brought up Milwaukee because... Um, they won last night without Giannis. I think Dame <laughs> is better when, when Giannis is out and he knows he has to carry the team. So the only other game, well, yes, Golden State technically still playing for seeding. They could end up with the home court in the 9-10. They're huge favorites tonight against Portland, 13 and a half. Lay it, lay it if you want, but that team on the road playing that many points, even against a team that's given up good luck. Uh, just a tough one on that. But the biggest game playoff picture-wise is New Orleans and Sacramento. Huge game here. Of course, these teams... uh uh, separated right now by two games. New Orleans, more importantly, a half game clear of Phoenix. Phoenix basically played the, with, uh, with the Ontario Clippers last night and struggled to beat them uh, in L.A. Uh, but they did cover. They, they Somehow. Somehow <laughs> they got there. Uh, Our guy Sean had, he had them yesterday. I mean, so. That's why it made him sweat. <laughs> uh, so three games left for New Orleans, okay? Three left. Tonight against Sacramento is just a gigantic game for New Orleans. They play the Warriors and the Lakers, who are going to be playing for 9-10 seeding. Uh, I mean, it's just a matter of how much do they care about the home court in those final two games. Sacramento could still get out of the playing scenario. They still could. Sacramento is two games back, get some help. They could find a way above New Orleans. It would take a lot, though. Uh, Sacramento winner of this game would have the tie break as well, which is awfully important. Kings won at home, Alex, 215 and a half the total. So the Kings just went on a nice little uh, road trip here, lost three out of four, finally back at home, now hosting New Orleans, who's actually been very good on the road, 26 and 14 straight up, 21 and 18 against the spread. So I would look at the Pelicans here. I know it's only a point. I'd probably just play them on the money line, but lot to play for, and I think they'll be up for the task. Um, Sacramento, a little bit tricky backing them, even at home, 16-22 and 22 against the spread this year. And for, for Sacramento, and a lot would need to happen to get to that six seed, but a win tonight would at least put them within a game of both Phoenix and New Orleans. And again, we know how important it is to get out of those playing games. Right uh, right now, the top five in the West is good. Those teams are all in. They're not going to have to bother with a playing scenario. Denver beat Minnesota last night, which now puts Denver a game clear of both Minnesota and Oklahoma City for the one seed, where they play San Antonio and Memphis the final two games of the season. They'll be huge favorites in both of those games. Denver now a big favorite, about a 78% chance of getting that one seed in the Western Conference, where if they had lost last night to Minnesota, it would have been sub-3%. So I just want to ask you this, because you've been very high on Denver all year. Is anyone beating them, or are they going back to I have back? A, I have a hard time seeing anyone in the West beating them. Uh, the East, look, Boston will have home court. Uh, they will have home court. Uh, if you can hold serve and win your four home games, yeah. sure. Boston will be favored in that series. I don't know if that's 100%. I don't know if they will... If they will, if they will be a bigger favorite than they should be. That's probably what I think will happen. But I mean, look, Denver. I expect to get through the West. I know people. They with the way that first series that one eight. Assuming they get the one, if it's Phoenix, the Lakers, or the Warriors, that price is going to be wrong. I, I already know that people will come in and blindly bet those three teams against Denver. Denver will crush Phoenix. Denver will it matches up great with the Lakers, and I just don't think Golden State is much in the tank lot. So I don't think it matters who gets that eight yeah. CD. And if it's Sacramento, it'll beat Sacramento in six. 
maybe they'll have to work a little harder. Yes. Uh, but I, I just think Denver is just so much better than everyone else. And then you trust in the Clippers in the playoffs? Oh. No, I'm not. Dallas? Mm, maybe. Dallas, maybe. Luka, of course, they've been in the Western Final not too long ago. Just yeah. two years ago, they were in the West Final. Maybe. We'll yeah. see. And, and then the Kyrie finally figuring the things out. The Timberwolves and the Thunder, as is it just, look, it, unfortunately for them, nature of the beast, it's hard to trust the team that's never been there and done that. And that's the case with both this Minnesota group and Oklahoma City. So we'll see how it all plays out over the next few days. All right. That's our show today. Gone Racing comes up in a half hour. Frank, Nic- Frank Nicotero, Ryan McCormick, and uh, I'll be there as well for Punchlines at noon, two and a half hours from now. Alex? Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Keep everybody in line during yeah. punch lights. Well, well, <laughs> no chance. No chance on my end. Uh, great work as always from our crew, and Caden, Sean, Ryan getting ready for Frank Nicotero. Is Frank still asleep? Probably still asleep, right? At 930? About right. All right. Gone Racing. Jeff Modley and Brendan Gone coming your way in a half hour here at the South Point Studio.